For anglers who enjoy fishing walleye on hard water, Saginaw Bay is a special place. In late December and early January, Saginaw Bay gets a carpet of ice that opens up this fishery to the masses. The problem is, where does a guy start on such a huge body of water? On this week's episode of Fishing 411 TV, Jake Romanak teams up with Brandon Stanton of Team Gunsmoke Sport Fishing and Guide Service. Jake and Brandon share with walleye anglers insights on how to read ice, the best ways to find fish, tips for using modern electronics, and also a strategy for selecting the most productive fishing presentations. What a gorgeous fish. We're going to get a quick picture for Facebook and then she's going back to do some spawning. I would rather have my guys safe than even have them catching fish. I'm constantly looking at the satellite images. I'm constantly on the weather. Uh, you know, I we follow out in a single file line. We keep distance between the snowmobiles. Like today, we had some tagalongs come out with us, and we do have cracks and shelves. And uh, you know, you got to have cracks and shelves to have safe ice. That hydraulic pressure's got to go somewhere. You know, we walk up to them, spud them open, uh, see what's what's in there. If there's a bottom or not, we'll move to a different spot. On the west side last week, some of the guys have ramps, but we have a prevailing west wind here. We usually don't get the open cracks. We get shoves. Saginaw Bay is extremely dangerous. Um, every day, you don't you don't know what you're in for. Every day, the wind switch switches, that ice moves. Uh, even if it just cracks it apart a little bit. When it goes back together, it doesn't fit like a puzzle piece. It'll it'll rotate, it'll leave a hole out there. Very dangerous place to be on. Uh, you really got to use a lot of common sense and a lot of precautions. If it doesn't look right, it ain't right. You know, when you talk to a lot of the old school guys that have been fishing out on Saginaw Bay, what they're going to tell you is bang the bottom. And basically what that's doing is that's what I did right there. I banged the bottom. Now I got this fish coming up. He's coming up. I want to keep working him up. The higher you get that fish, the better. So I'm gonna keep working them up. Oh, just stop. Keep it right in front of them. And get them to bite. You wanna keep working that fish up in the water column. The further that fish comes up, the better chance you have of that fish actually biting. But when you bang the bottom, what you're doing is you're actually kicking the sediment up. And that's what these fish are keen on. You see that sediment kick up, they're gonna come in and investigate. So now he's going back down, he's going down quick. And I'm gonna follow him right down really quick. I'm being fairly aggressive here. I wanna stay right on that fish. He's right back down on the bottom, and so I'm gonna go back down to what they call pounding bottom. And I'm gonna keep that right down there and see if I can't get him to come up. Now he went a long ways, but he didn't bite. But here he is coming up again. Sometimes what you'll find is if you just can't get him to bite, but I got him to bite just like that. Now that is really cool. 
that shows right there how I got that fish to bite because he did not just come in and smack it. You had to make that fish work for it. But we were able to work him up. Let's see here. There we go. That is so cool. You know, one of the things about ice fishing for walleyes, as you're going to find, is some days anybody's a hero. You can go out on the ice, drill your hole, and you're going to catch those fish because they're going to come up really aggressively. But more days than not, you have to work those fish. And if you work those fish, just like I worked this one, you're going to get them to bite even when they're lethargic. I dropped it down to the bottom, pounded that bottom, lifted them up, and I had that fish up off bottom multiple times before he finally bit. But when he did, boom, there he was, and we got ourselves a walleye. on this one same fish he never went off the screen this time I'm gonna give him a little bit uh, I'm gonna horse him a little bit to keep him on he's definitely spunky you let me know when you see oh, color yeah, oh that's a good eater but he is spunky nice took that lead head he, he came after after this uh, jig head, and I knew by the feel of it, there wasn't even a minnow on it. He just ate that jig head. After he got off twice and went after the spoon, I jiggled that lead head and, and uh, he went right after it, no minnow. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fish hawk is called boating. So I think you could tell from the focus of this week's show that one of the most important things with ice fishing is your electronics. And there's no question that it is super important. And my piece of equipment that I use here is this Hook 7 unit from Lowrance. And the cool thing about this unit itself is it's a price point unit. It used to be you get what you pay for when it comes to electronics, but that's not really the case anymore. Lowrance has done a great job with these Hook units, making a unit that doesn't cost a ton of money, but does a lot. The sonar capabilities of this unit is as good as any unit that I've personally used. And the nice thing is that's teamed up with the GPS. The GPS in the unit is going to give you a plot trail, it's going to give you waypoints, and it's going to allow you to get on and off the ice safely. But the other cool thing is you can put a chip in this unit. I have a lithium battery right in this unit itself, and the lithium battery allows me to get all day long and not have to worry about losing battery juice. The other nice thing about a lithium battery is it's lighter, so it's not as heavy out here on the ice with me, and it also charges super fast. So at the end of the day, I plug it in and it charges really fast. And what I've done is I put a USB port on here so I can charge my cell phone if my cell phone goes dead throughout the day. But Lowrance actually makes an ice pack for their, for their hook units. So you can get an ice pack, it comes with an ice transducer, an open water transducer, and you're out fishing again with your hook unit. So Lowrance has done a really good job creating a unit that's more of a price point unit, something that anybody can afford, and you can still be a successful ice fisherman. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Feel like a good one? It's got some shoulders to it. Looked like a good mark on the screen there. Ooh. Staying down nice. I'm gonna give her a little drag. I don't want her to snap at the last second. She's coming up to the hole. Oh. No, she's not. Not going, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good fish. Oh, there it is, Brandon. That's a nice fish. That is a beautiful fish. She's a leader. Oh, hold on, hold on. She's gonna. She's not done yet. Oh, come on, baby. Line your head up there. Ooh. Come on. Come on. Yeah, there she man. goes. There she comes. <laughs> nice. Let's pull this thing out of there, Brandon. Nice, nice. fish, buddy. Oh, she's, she's mad. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Saginaw Bay is all about right there. We got your dead stick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got the dead stick. Down there. Got it all bunch of professionals over here. <laughs> Beautiful fish. <laughs> he was suspended about five feet off the bottom. I had one like that the other day come through that was just come up suspended like that. You know, if you're going to fish big water ice, you're going to need a big machine to get you on and off safely. And what I have here is a BRP Scanic to get me on and off the ice safely. And I have it set up just perfect for my own style of fishing. And I'll start here at the front. Basically at the front, I have an ice auger. And I like to keep my auger up on the front. That way I know it's always safe. And I have it on this system 
where it's really nice. All I have to do is just undo this lever right here, pull up, and I got my auger. I drill the holes that I need to drill, set it back on the rack itself, then I can snap it back down just like that. So there's no bungee straps. I don't have to worry about anything coming off as far as that goes. Now, like I said, when you're fishing big ice, it's really important to get on and off the ice safely. So to do that, I like to travel the same plot trail that I traveled in the morning back in the afternoon when I'm coming off the ice. That way I know that I'm traveling on safe ice. So to do that, I have an HDS carbon unit here right on the dash, a Lowrance unit, and I can be able to save my waypoints so I can go out and find those fish from day after day, and then I can get on and off the ice safely as well. So that gets me on and off the ice safe. And then what I like to do is I had a box built for this machine, and this box basically just has like my, my propane heater goes in there, uh, my electronics all go right here inside this box. That way it's safe. If I put it in my shack, chances are it's gonna be broken when I get to the spot. So I can put it in this box and it stays safe. I got that teamed up with another rack here at the back where my spud is, and that spud is, allows me to stay safe. If I'm crossing a pressure crack, I can use the spud to check that pressure crack before I go over it with my machine. And then from there, I have my otter shack that's right hooked up to the back. And I always leave my shack hooked up to the unit. The reason why I do that is so when I wanna go from spot to spot, it's super quick. I flip the shack up, turn the key on the machine, and I'm off to the next spot. If you're not traveling as an ice fisherman and covering ice, you're not gonna be successful. Don't be afraid to move. If you're not marking fish, go to another spot. Sooner or later throughout the day, you're gonna get on a nice pot of fish and catch a bunch of them. Special considerations provided by Precision Trolling, the Troller's Bible. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. New for 2020, Yakima Bait Company's got a brand new jig called the Hammer Time Walleye Jig. This jig was actually developed by the staff at Fishing 411. And the idea here was to create a jig that was perfectly suited for river fishing situations. This particular jig has got a very long shank hook on it, which is ideally suited for fishing plastics. It's also got a four-aught hook on it, which is very large for a walleye jig. That's also ideally suited for fishing plastics. It's a modified stand-up design, and the beauty of that is when you drop it to the bottom, it'll rest up off the bottom and keep the hook point up where it needs to be to increase those hook set potentials as well. It comes in three different sizes. There's a half ounce version, a three quarter ounce version, and a one ounce version. This is gonna be ideally suited for deep water or swift streams. The Hammer Time Walleye Jig by Yakima Bait Company is new for 2020, and it comes in a dozen fish catching colors. Oh, he's coming up quick. He's coming. <laughs> that was a no brainer. I didn't have to do much for that one. He just come flying up off the bottom. Took a look at it, and about a second later, punk, there he was. Feels like a pretty good fish. Lined up there. Oh, there she comes. Here she comes. <laughs> Come on. Get out of that hole. There we go. That's not a bad fish right there. Those are the ones you like too, because that fish just come rocketing up off the bottom. Gave it a little bit of a jig, and boom, there he was. What a nice. Nice Saginaw Bay walleye. Oh, there looks like there's one on my dead stick right there. Grab this rod quick. My guy's taking out line. Go over. Yep. Yep, he's there. Oh, feels like a pretty good fish. That fish come up off the bottom, and he was kind of chasing my spoon, but he just didn't eat the spoon, and then he went right back down, and he sat there right at my dead stick. And I was watching that mark just sit on the dead stick. Next thing you know, he's grabbed a hold of it. And basically what a dead stick is, is it's just that. It's a jig that's sitting stationary in the water. Oh man, that is a nice fish. That is really a nice fish. Wow. Throwing rods all over the place. Man, he didn't feel like he was that big. That is a gorgeous fish. But that fish came up off the bottom and was chasing my spoon. And he came up and down off the bottom multiple times. And then he just kind of went down back to the bottom and he sat right next to my dead stick. And what a dead stick is, is basically a rod that's just sitting in a rod holder. And it's got that jig, just like that, with a minnow on it. Of course, the minnow's falling off now. But that minnow's just sitting down there doing its thing. And that fish was just a little too lethargic to eat a moving presentation, like a jigging spoon that I had on. But he had no problem 
taking a big old bite out of that jig in a minnow. What a nice fish. Structure, we look for structure, humps, holes, fingers, but the structure in the bay is not huge rock piles where there's six foot drops or 10 foot drops. We're looking, we're looking for like two foot drops or two foot humps. That's a lot of structure in the bay. It's weird because they spawn in the Saginaw River, but they'll migrate north until just about bad ice or last ice, and then they hurry up and rush back to the Saginaw River. It's but you'll find yourself hitting this structure, um, you know, finding your holes, humps, fingers, uh, inside corners, moving north, and then as the year progresses, you're gonna hurry up and make a mad dash back towards the river. Why they do it, I don't know, but it's just something that we've figured out. That's that's how we end up fishing every year. Th this is about our average size fish. I mean, we've been picking up a little bit smaller fish today. Um, but this is, this is a 20, 21 inch fish is a good eater. Uh, we get fish all the way up to nine and a half pounds, 10 pounds. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Daiwa Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. You know, one of the cool things about ice fishing is just about no matter where you live, you get to fish two lines. And that's a huge advantage with ice fishing. What I like to do is I like to have a jigging rod basically set up in my hand that I'm constantly moving and jigging up and down the water column. And then what I like to do is I have, like to have a dead stick. Now with the dead stick, you can use that as two different things, and that just depends on how the fish are. If the fish are really lethargic that day, what I like to do is just put a lead head jig on that dead stick, put it in the rod holder, and let it sit stationary. And a lot of times you'll have those fish that aren't aggressive enough to come up and hit that jigging presentation, they'll hit that jigging or that dead stick presentation that's not moving at all. But on days where those fish are biting really good, what I like to do is I like to put a lure right on my dead stick that maybe be a jigging spoon or a jigging wrap, and I like to just let that sit there. And then when I catch a fish, a lot of times they'll come in in schools of two, three, four at a time. And so what you can do is you can catch that one aggressive fish that bites your jigging rod, and if you quick grab that dead stick and start working that, you can catch that fish as well. Use those two rods to catch as many fish as possible. There we go. Got that fish to bite. We had that all basically on live roll, and the crazy thing is, is that fish must have been down there for a solid minute before we finally got him to bite. Oh, it's nice fish too. Oh, no, off in the hole. Man, finally got him to bite, and then just like that he got off. Ice fishing can be frustrating, but I tell you what, when they do bite and you do get them in the hole, it sure is a lot of fun. Well, I just lost that fish in the hole, unfortunately, and basically what happened is I've caught a lot of fish on this spoon here the last few days. So this is the hook that came on the spoon factory. It's a good hook, eagle claw hook, but the problem is, is that after any hook catches a lot of fish, it just starts to go dull. So I've taken that one off and I've replaced it with the trocar hook. There's an eagle claw trocar. And that hook is super sharp. So I'm back in action again. I lost that fish, that was on me because I let that hook get too dull. Sir, oh, he pinned it right out of the dirt. Came down and pinned it. You see how he flew down and... Let's see what we got here. Feels like a little better fish. Oh yeah, a little better than the... Uh-oh, I can't get his head in the hole here. Come on, buddy. That's a good fish. Uh, looks like a 22, 23 inch fish. There. Come here, come here, come here. Oh no, there we go. There's a better fish. Let's take a second and talk about the lures that we're fishing today here on Saginaw Bay. And really these lures that you're gonna fish are good across the ice belt. No matter where you go, if there's ice and there's walleyes, you can take these lures and be successful. So the very first lure we're gonna talk about is a jigging spoon. Now jigging spoons come in two different categories in my opinion. There's a lot of different shapes and sizes to jigging spoons, but this spoon right here is called a slender spoon. What a slender spoon does is it has a slow fall and a lot of flash. Just like this slender spoon here, I have a dew jigger here. Same thing, it's a great spoon, but what happens with this style of spoon, when you drop it, it slowly falls in the water and it has a lot more flash. Now with this jigging spoon that I have in my hand, this is a moonshine spoon. 
And the cool thing about this spoon is it's got a faster fall. Now I like to use this style spoon when the fish are more aggressive. When they're coming in and chasing it very aggressively, this spoon right here works really good because it drops fast and you can stay in front of those fish very well. The other category of lures that you're gonna fish is a jigging wrap. Now jigging wrap is extremely popular. Across the ice belt, no matter where you go, a jigging wrap just simply catches walleyes. They come in a lot of different sizes, but with the jigging wrap, what you wanna keep in mind is this bait is what I would consider a horizontal bait, meaning that it fishes horizontal in the water and it darts out to the side horizontally. Some days that's exactly what it takes to get bit. So what I would recommend doing is make sure you have some jigging wraps in your tackle box and have some jigging spoons and let the fish tell you on any given day what it's gonna to take to get bit. Make sure you have the presentation right, and then you can experiment with color throughout the day. But trust me, just having that right presentation is all it's gonna to take to get bit. There we go. Feels like a pretty good fish. Kind of rolling a little bit down there, but this one's got a little weight to it. Oh yeah, not a big one, but kind of coming up funny. Come on, baby, get lined up. Time to come and play. <laughs> Slow and steady, here he comes. <laughs> oh. Man, we have just had a ton of fun today catching a bunch of eater walleyes like this. Hey, my name's Jake Romanek. If you get a chance, make sure you come out to Saginaw Bay and enjoy this awesome walleye action. We'll see you here same time, same place next week. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Ontario, Canada, Starcraft Marine, Yakima Bait Company, Smooth Moves, Niagara Falls, USA, Lawrence Electronics, Evinrude Outboards, and by Jay's Sporting Goods. I'm gonna double fist a hamburger and catch this fish. You can see, I'm gonna feed it a little bit to him, Gabe. See, he, he just dropped it. There he's got it again. 